What up my fellow dorks, it is the Turtle Dork back with a new recap and review for episode 7 of season 4, Mockingbird, directed again by Alex Sakharov. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get into this. I'm the Turtle Dork, this is the Disco Dork. Let's get into this episode. So uh, we start off with Tyrion and Jamie. so they're talking in his cell and um, we're learning a little bit more about uh, this trial by uh, combat and what's going to end up happening. Well, in this scene, I guess one point I want to know is yeah. this is immediately following the, the actual trial um, in the uh, throne room or wherever that was. Yeah, I think yeah, it was it was in the throne room because he was sitting on uh, Tywin was sitting on the throne. the throne. Yeah. So I wonder if that's symbolic in a way. Well, anyway, you know. yeah, this this takes place right <laughs> after, you know, this scene happens right after that, which um, is a very strong scene and yeah. pivotal scene uh, in the show, especially for the character of Tyrion. So this is the fallout of that, because yeah. what was supposed to happen was, uh, if you have not seen the previous recap episode, um, basically Jamie brokered a deal with Tywin yeah. that if he were to spare Tyrion that Jaime would renounce the Kingsguard and then go to Castle Rock. And so he told Tyrion, look, don't no more outbursts, just chill for the sure, letter man. part of the thing. Yeah, man. Uh, go ahead and plead guilty. They're gonna send you to the wall, you'll be alive and everything will be straight. So just play it cool. Obviously that doesn't happen and Tyrion decides to he he requests trial by combat, yeah. and so this scene picks up right after that. Yeah, and he says, you know, um, talks he, he talks to Jamie about Braun because he's looking for a champion to represent him in the trial by combat. He's like, you know, he he fought for me once in trial by combat. I guess he'll he'll do it for me again, um, and uh, because he thinks that Cersei is going to choose Sir Meryn. Yeah, and he's hoping. Uh, he's yeah. hoping. Yeah, he was hoping for that. And I like this transition that we cut from <laughs> Jamie and 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 uh, Tyrion in the cell, and we uh, we get we get the new version of the mountain, Mountain Two Point Yeah, so Mountain got recast from the last time we seen. He went them. from the Rocky Mountains <laughs> to the fucking Everest, Mount Everest. Man, and this is what I, I I always remember all the recasts. Like we talk about Dario, um, I remember the guy that's playing Dario now because I totally forgot about Ed Screen who played him, or that that was the same character. And the, when people uh, talk about the mountain this is who i envision or, or remember as the mountain is this big hulking looking guy who you said was uh doing um he's not an actor but he is in a lot no, of no he does uh, strongman comics. Strong, strongman yeah, comics. Yeah, like he's pulling in airplanes and shit and lifting <laughs> telephone poles and you see it in this in this episode okay they say what when they cut to him what is he doing uh, he basically the, is the, has a sword. Describe the scene. He has a sword. That's his introduction. Is he has a sword and it's an overhead shot and the guy uh, with his sword pierced through his belly and he basically has him raised and then you don't see the mountain until he moves the guy over and the camera is looking at him from an overhead shot. So and that's how we get introduced to him. And what does he do after that? Uh, takes another guy and guts him. <laughs> okay. The reason why I'm asking is. What the fuck is he doing? Like, what, is yeah, he executing that's what, people? That, that's, that's what I, said. I was going to ask you the same he, thing. He's not <laughs> executing people because people have, there's weapons on the ground. They're like, yeah, pick up a, a mace and go at him, whatever. Is he training? <laughs> how the fuck is that? That's my thing. Like, if that's training, how the fuck is that even training? Those guys pose no type of, that's like going to the gym and lifting five pounds. There's no resistance in that. You're not getting nothing out of that. Yeah. He's just slaughtering them dudes. That's what I'm trying to think. Because then the guys are like, mercy. Like, have mercy on us. Yeah. And like, okay. Uh, maybe that was their punishment. Was to like, all right, you're going to die. But here you go. Here's a fighting chance. And try to go up against the man. Ah, the mountain. I don't know. But... Yeah, it was. It was. I was, it was, it, I was wondering, like, what the fuck is? The, yeah, not even the point in the show, but like in the in the in the world, like, what the fuck is the point of that? Like, what know, are they doing? I know it's fucking crazy, man. But this is it, a big motherfucker. He's huge. Um, so we'll get. To, we'll talk a lot about that in the next episode. Um, Arya and the Hound. Um, I have them written down twice. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, because this is the one 
where they come upon oh, the old guy. This is a great scene when the old guy yeah. who uh, has been stabbed in the stomach, he has a fatal uh, ab abdominal wound, yeah. and basically he's just he's just waiting that shit out, waiting to take his last breath, and they come across him. So basically this is... Kind of plays to the whole point that you were talking about before. Right, yeah. so in the, in the previous episode where the Hound and Arya are taken in by uh, a farmer and his daughter... Mm -hmm. um, the next morning, the hound knocks the guy on the head, steals the gold, and Arya chastises him. What are you doing? You can't just steal from people. And the hound's reasoning was, you know, they're not going to need that silver anyway. They're going to be dead soon. He's like, what are you talking about? You know, winter's coming, and, you yeah. know, these people are weak, and they can't defend themselves. Dead people don't need silver. They're going to be dead soon. Yeah. And basically what he was saying was, this the world we live in. You know, you got the wildlings out there, you got bandits out there, just mm -hmm. any type of people, cutthroat people that are going to come through. If they want something, they're going to take they're gonna it. They're going to take it from you. And yeah. if you're not strong enough, you know, you'll, you'll be a victim, right? And yeah. so basically this scene is that speech encapsulated. Exactly. Like there was exactly. this guy who, this older man who was just at the wrong place in the wrong time. And, you know, he had some people come through and just decimate his home, burn his house down and stab and him in the stomach. Dead, yeah. from dead, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like you say, and again, all these scenes with Arya and the Hound, I'm really watching Arya and seeing how she takes all this stuff in. And like you were saying, what the Hound was saying about when they took the silver from that uh, that father and daughter and what he was saying about that and then her seeing that and seeing that kind of play out, um, you know, however many days or weeks later, and was like shit you know he was right mm -hmm. and uh i also like the fact that um she kind of she kind of not necessarily copying him but like i said she she learns from everybody that she's with so when he he kill when he kills him and stabs him in the heart uh he wipes his sword on him and then these other two guys because there's a bounty out for um for uh the hound and uh, uh because they learned that joffrey was killed and these two guys come up and uh, <laughs> one guy jumps on him and bites him in the neck, which comes back to play back in another great scene between the two of them. And he just flips him over, breaks his neck, and just kills him. And and uh, so that's when he learns about the bounty. And um, yeah, and then uh, Arya ends up killing the other guy by taking needle and stabbing him right in the heart, like the Hound said. It's like this is where the heart is. And she take I like how she takes needle and then wipes him, uh, wipes the sword on him the same way the Hound did that. So just you know, again talking about what we said before and just Arya learning from all these people along her journey that she's with. Um, and I just I, I really like that that relationship between the two of them. Um, Tyrion and Braun in his cell. Uh, another great scene and another scene that ends really well with somebody um, uh, expressing their uh, their admiration and their friendship towards Tyrion. Yeah. Uh, like I said, there's not many people in King's Landing, like you were talking about before, that either respect or always looking down, talking either behind his back or, or to him in such a, a demeaning way. But there's certain people, Braun, Jamie, Podrick, uh, who really admire and look up and, and are willing to come to, come to his aid. And um, I like this scene between the two of them. Uh, I just thought it was a really, really good scene where Braun is basically saying, like, look, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to be your champion. You know, I got some good things going for me. I'm, I'm going to be married. You know, I'm going to be able to get my own castle. Um, I, I like you. You're a friend. But I, I, I like myself a little bit more. But you know? I, I think what it all comes down to is Braun realizes he knows he can't beat the mountain. Oh, okay. And it's not, okay. it's not, and he says, maybe I might, be, yeah, be able to dance around him, and make yeah, him, yeah, tire him out or whatever, yeah. might get a good shot in, but it, Brian doesn't feel confident enough that he can beat the mountain. And from, for everything that he's amassed at this point, he doesn't yeah. feel like that risk is worth, it's worth it. it. Yeah. Um, and I can kind of, and I understand it's, it's, it's sad because you want him to say, screw that, man. Put it all on the line, risk it for Tyrion. But at the end of the day, like you can't, I I can't really fault him. No, for that. and Tyrion doesn't either. No, because yeah. if it was someone that Bronn knew he could take, no question, yeah, he would have done it. Even though yeah. he just got married, even though you know he could get a castle or whatever, even though mm -hmm. he could get whatever reward Tyrion offers him, 
it don't matter. Like, he, if it was somebody he felt he could take, boom, all right, I got you. But yeah. he knows, I think Braun believes that he can't take the mountain. And, and if he could, it'd be, the odds would be stacked so much against him that he, he doesn't feel like it's worth it. And like I said, I understand that. Yeah, um, let's uh, let's jump to, uh, all right, let's talk about both of these scenes together. Uh, Danny and Dario. So Dario comes to uh, to see Danny. He got some roses. Like, Man, he breaks into her room. Like he comes, and climbs in her window. Yeah, you know. But he's just trying to be a gentleman. He's trying to. Is that being a gentleman? I mean, he's got roses. He broke into her room, but he got roses. Go into <laughs> climb through your girl window that you ain't even really courted yet. Climb through her window with some roses. See what happens to your ass. See if you get the draw. Nope. <laughs> the cheap. You getting cheap. shot. You getting shot. You getting the cops called on you. You getting her brother coming over to whoop your ass. Pretty much. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Dario don't don't seem like he got much game, or he don't know how to really kind of. But he, uh, like, he, but Danny seemed to be going for it though. So that's game. Like he got it. Yeah, but he seemed like he go. Well, this like fool, I said, this maybe fool did in. Three episodes with Jorah couldn't do an entire all, series. The, it's four, three, four seasons in, and Jorah, all he get is the fucking face touch that's basically saying, like, look, you're never going to be with they me. They know he get, he get to meet the dude on his way out of smash, smashing his Yeah, his, <laughs> so basically, yeah, so Dario gets the draws. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next morning he come walking out putting this shirt on and Jorah come around the corner and he like oh shit how you come know on, you man. fucked up when you you doing the walk of shame going to I know girl, right, right? <laughs> <laughs> walk of shame is supposed to be leaving yeah. not coming in yeah Jorah, Jesus Jorah, man. Like, oh man it's, oh. it's so hurtful and the show know what it's doing too like you why would you even have to include that scene <laughs> it's, it's, the show knows what it's doing just yeah. twisting the knife I know I know and then to make it worse they have a conversation between um, um, Jorah and uh, Danny. Danny where you know he's trying to play like look Danny what are you doing like you don't know this guy you don't, why, you could tr I don't trust this dude like why are you and um, so they have a they have a conversation because, because she because Danny wants to send Dario to Yunkai to Yunkai to yeah. kill all the masters like yeah. all of them because then in his courting he says yo send me out to kill your enemies I'll kill you just name anybody I'll go kill every last one of them mm -hmm. and then I guess that gets him in good so anyway uh -huh. the next day she sends him off to go do that and uh, she's having that conversation with George she's telling George look I'm sending him off to go kill all the slave masters yeah. at uh, Junkai so Junkai so Jora eventually uh, persuades her to take a different approach yeah and so he's like, you know, it's like, so tell him, tell him, it was tell him you changed my mind. No, first she was like, so tell him I changed, I changed my, my mind. mind. Yeah. The juror was like, okay. Yeah. And then she stops him. Tell, no, tell him you, you changed my mind. And then Jordan feel good. He feel he feeling real good. He forgot that. And, <laughs> and, the, and the dude, the dude still didn't smash the girl that you in love with, but he's sticking his chest out. Sure, Danny. I can do that. I can tell him. I changed his mind. <laughs> I changed her mind. All right, man. All right, man. It's just, it's just sad. Oh, God, I hope Jorah gets... He's not. Something, man. Or at, least get, or at least get over Danny and find somebody else. There's many There's many women in Westeros. It's not happening. But the, just like just like Dar Dario said, you know, there's, yeah, there's thousands of women in Marine, but... Yeah. There's only know. one Danny. I know. A uh, uh, quick scene here, because we want to get through this kind of quickly. Uh, Melisandre, and I think her name is Celise. Now, my biggest takeaway, and we talked about this, the fucking necklace. So I don't know if she put a spell on somebody or what, because that's a big thing. And I was like, yo, this can't be an oversight by the show, because the show is way too detailed with all the different nuances and how they have to tie in all these different threads. That cannot be an oversight, or maybe it is. So the scene in question, when we cut to the scene, Melisandre is in the bathtub. Yeah, she's taking a bath. And um, Stannis' wife walks in. And immediately, as soon as they cut to Melisandre, I notice she doesn't have her necklace on, but she looks like... So Melisandre we know before yeah. we see her true uh, true, true identity, form, yeah. true form or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Because I thought it was the necklace. Maybe maybe it's something, a detail later in the series that explains maybe it's not the necklace. But I thought that scene where we see her true form establishes that yeah, it's that because was, the that necklace. That was the collar that when she takes it off, that's, what's, that's what covers her true self or her true form because they, they, that that reveal makes it seem like it's the necklace. Right. Now, yeah. but 
also as this scene plays out uh while she's in the in the bathtub um she asked stannis wife to look on the shelf and get her one of the, the potions. potions there's a bunch of potions, potions on the shelf that, that do different things yeah, yeah. and so after she's finished bathing she gets out she goes to the the rack and she starts uh telling her a little bit about each potion and she's saying like with this one i can make this one reveals the truth after men see what i want them to see or whatever mm -hmm. so i don't uh, apparently obviously there are melisandre has multiple ways of making people see what she wants them to see that's okay so i don't know if there's something that was used maybe in uh what do you call it, aromatherapy Aroma, aroma yeah, when she walks like anybody that walks to the room is going to see her as that because right. i'm sure she don't want to keep that collar on at any t all the time right. somebody could just walk in right so yeah maybe there is a potion or like you say some type of incense or something that she has in the room so that when people walk in that could very well possibly be the case so yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to look too deep into that yeah. Uh, let's jump to the second scene with Arya and the Hound. This is a big one for me because um, we get the Hound telling Arya uh, the story about her brother and him being burned because he's trying to stitch himself up from the bite that he got from the guy that was uh, trying to capture him uh, for the uh, for the bounty. So um, Arya's saying like, "Look, you, you need to you need to use the fire to, in order to uh, you know to." Um, Kill the infection. Yeah, kill the infection. And he's like, look, no fire, no fire. And you could see the fear and, and that he has for fire. And Arya sees that too. And I like just um, him telling that story because I don't think we've really gotten uh, to hear that story from the Hound. We heard that when Peter was telling the story to Sansa, uh, like in season one, but we've never heard it directly from the Hound. And to hear him talk about it, especially with them as kids, and to hear how his father covered kind of covered it up to protect his brother the mountain um saying like how he how he uh, he knows how he got burned by his brother, but the, the way his father kind of spent it to protect the mountain and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just very sad. And I think this is also uh, to see that connection between Arya and um, the Hound uh, in that moment, even though we say like she has her list, but you could see her really sympathizing with him in that moment and she she goes over to assist him with stitching up his neck because even well i don't want to say she could have took him out because she tried to do it with the well she didn't throw the rock on him that one time but either way i just thought it was a great scene between the two of them but yeah that was no she, she could i'm glad you mentioned that she could my whole so this whole time i'm watching this particular scene i'm like why don't she just take needle and stick it in his neck when she's behind him yeah I, in the previous episode i talked about how or oh, I talked about how I was unsure of how their story mm -hmm. is going to play out. Is she going to keep him on that list? Is she going to end up killing him? And I think, again, this show has so many breadcrumbs that, you, in retrospect, that you yeah. look at that you know things make sense. So many clues. Yeah, yeah. The f the first time she didn't kill the hound with the rock. Yeah. She it it didn't happen out of fear. I think because he. He intimidated her. He said, "Go ahead, take you yeah, out, give you one shot." shot. And, you, and she I, was, a, she, yeah. yeah, she was worried. Like, man, what if I don't? don't. She was doubting, exactly. just yeah, doubting yeah, herself, yeah, right? Yeah. At this point, she doesn't have that type of doubt. She's murdered like four grown ass men now. Yeah. In this her previous scene, she stabbed a motherfucker in the heart. Yeah. So and her kill list is going and, up. And when she did it, she, there was no, there was no remorse. There was no yeah. regret. There was no emotion at all. She yeah. stuck him and wiped her, wiped the blood off when he fell. So she's got bodies on her belt now, right? Yeah. So. I don't think that there's that potential, there's that uh, particular hesitation or uncertainty or, or self-doubt now. She knows yeah. she can kill somebody. She could definitely kill him with Needle. Yeah. What, I, what I feel like is going to happen is I, I don't think she's going to end up killing the Hound. Yeah. I, I, she's yeah. had multiple opportunities Chances, yeah. to do it. Yeah. yeah. And in this, this particular scene, to me, goes a long way yeah. to exemplify that. she. I don't think she's going to end up doing it. And also... And another scene that's coming up soon before this, this season ends is when Brienne and the Hound yeah, they, uh, they face off. Face off, yeah. The Hound gets injured. Again, Arya has an opportunity 
definitely to kill him because he's not in any position to fight back whatsoever. He's, yeah. he's gravely wounded. And she doesn't. And she doesn't do it. Yeah. So I don't think that she's going to... I think that name is one that's not going to be crossed off the list. Yeah, I think I think so too. And I've, I've always thought that, especially now going back on this rewatch and really kind of solidifying how I feel about that relationship between the two of them. So um, let's get to uh, two more scenes I want to talk about. Uh, first, Oberyn and Tyron. The t Tyron. The Tyron. Tyrion. Tyrion. Um, in his cell. When he says he's going to be his champion. He's going to be his champion. Great scene. And good, um, good react, good um, acting from, again, Peter Dinklage, uh, just reactions from him listening to Oberyn tell the story about when they were kids and he went to visit um, the Lannisters at Castle Rock and mm -hmm. talking about Cersei, you know, look at, you know, my freak brother and stuff like that. And, just powerful stuff, man. Powerful stuff that, I mean, it's already been kind of reinforced throughout the whole series up until this point yeah. as far as how Cersei and how people see Tyrion. Um, but, yeah, I just, I like this scene because we we inevitably know where this is going because we know why uh, Oberyn is there. He wants vengeance for his sister and his sister's children for what the mountain did to them. And knowing that the mountain is going to be fighting this trial by combat, you know, he tells him, he's like, look, I will, I'll be your champion. Yeah. Like, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm here for vengeance and I'll, I'll be your champion. But I just thought that was just a beautifully acted scene between Pedro Pascal and, and Peter Dinklage in that moment. Just, just great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's get to the let's get to the moon door. Let's get to uh, that whole sequence. Let's talk a little bit about Sansa, Robin, Peter Baelish, and crazy ass si silly Liza. Silly Liza. Yeah. <laughs> silly Liza. Um, you know, Sansa is in the courtyard and uh, and she's building a, a, a replica of What's Winterfell and. Robin comes and after a brief conversation, he ends up trashing the shit and, and out of anger, she smacks him. Uh, immediately regretting it. Peter Bayless saw the whole thing, comes down and starts talking to her yeah. about, you know, um, again, Caitlyn, and then also about friggin' Sandra herself and how beautiful she is and more beautiful than Caitlyn, and then he kisses yeah, her. Yeah, because Peter Bayless is talking to himself like, you know, and like and you you could have been my, I've loved your mother so much, and, and in, a, in a different time, place, or whatever, like you could have been my, my daughter. daughter and stuff like that. And, and he kisses her. her hair, kiss her, yeah. And then freaking. Uh, Liza sees that. It's like from a, like from a, like one of those uh, fucking thrillers that you see that shot. It's just the rack focus. You yeah, see her up there, up there tripping. <laughs> and so she summons uh, Sansa to the moon room, the moon door room. Yeah. And uh, she admit she she says that I saw what you did, and she freaks out, and then she attempts to push Sansa out the moon door. Um, but then Peter comes and yeah. intervenes, and he gets her to chill out, and then he says, you know, there's only one woman I've ever loved and he said it was your sister and he pushes her out the moon door <laughs> and that's how the episode ends but that shit was just crazy man and, but you can see how Baelish mm -hmm. was uh, planning all this stuff yeah. man like he he kissed you knew you. there was a reason he knew Liza was going to see that yeah. and he wanted her to see that yeah. because I, again when we got to the moon door I was like he knew how Liza was going to react mm -hmm. and I was thinking that okay he's doing this so that he can make it seem like he's protecting Sansa yeah and um, I'm glad that we've gotten to a point in the show where Sansa was able to see through that bullshit. Yeah. Um, but that shit was just crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. Yeah. So I, I don't know, man. Like, I, we know how everything ends with him becoming Lord of the Veil. Well, Robin becomes Lord of the Veil because yeah. I remember in the Battle of the Bastards, they come to help out. Mm -hmm. Um, in mm -hmm. that in that battle to kind of yeah. save the day. So it's kind of good he did that shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because if they hadn't shown if they hadn't shown up, like uh, yeah, John was fucked. Yeah, John. Yeah, John was fucked. Then Liza wasn't going to send uh, send uh, Lord of Vale to no. help them because uh, the way she was acting, she hates everything everything about her sister yeah. and the Starks. Yeah. So. 
Oh man, that shit was wild. I didn't so. remember. I didn't remember the episode ending on that and pushing her ass out of the moon. Nah, yeah, I, I remember her going. I couldn't remember if we. Well, I knew we weren't going to see her hit the rocks, but goddamn, that. <laughs> well, the show does it great because she she's uh, in order to scare Sansa, she she explains what it's like when the bodies hit the rocks. So yeah. be right before she gets pushed out, so you get a good mental picture on your own of what probably happened to her. Ah, uh, so, that shit. I do wish I would have saw that though. Do you? Yeah, I man. I, like, you know, I like when bodies explode on, in movies and TV and shit. It'd been like it'd been like uh, Andy Samberg uh, rolling down the thing in Hot Rod. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just stop, stop uh, punch dancing, punch in, dancing. The, in the forest, man. Don't do it. Don't do it. It ends badly every time. Uh, so that is episode seven. Uh, what was the name? Uh, Mockingbird, not Mockingjay. Damn your, it. Your girl wasn't in this one, mm. so we'll see her again. Don't worry. Uh, Mockingbird, directed by Alex Sakharov. So let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. Remember to rate, like, subscribe, and share. And remember to check out our other dorks at Mouth Dork, at WB Dash, at Sidewalk Siren. Check out the podcast at It Modcast. I am the turtle dork. This guy is Disco Dork at the Disco Dork. And for that, we are out of here.